Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Roasty Toasty Sanctuary this morning. Heart, heart warm, warm hearts in here and warm bodies, right? And the Spirit of God is already here awaiting us all. Thank you and we join, for joining us this morning in the sanctuary. Thank you for those joining us on Facebook or listening to our website. We're glad you could be here today. We're putting aside everything of, of everything that's happened before today and focusing in on God today, correct? Yes, all right, you came here for, and to receive a message from God, I'm sure. And one of the things that God would love us all to do is read the scriptures more. How about that? The word of God. We put the word of God into our hearts and our minds and then into our lives. It makes a big difference. So we're having a new uh, Bible study that's just starting this coming Wednesday night at 7 p.m. It's about our resurrection. If anybody needs to have new life and a resurrection in your life, join us uh, this Wednesday at uh, 7. Uh, Deacon Charlotte will be leading that for us. She has a nice little journal booklet you can write in. Um, through this time, it's going to be a four-week study, and we're going to begin by reading John 14, chapter 14 through chapter 16. Just a couple of chapters in the Bible is all we're asking you to do before you come to the uh, to our service um, of uh, session. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm at service now. I understand. Okay. <laughs> it's an exciting time to be with you all. So that said, let us just. Uh, Enter a time of peace and calm and awaiting God's presence this morning. Let us pray. Loving God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for gathering us here in this time and this place. We thank you, God, that we have a safe place to come into, to worship you, to feel your presence, to have our lives changed, and for us to all grow spiritually, Lord. We know your presence is here already awaiting us, God. You have so much for us this very day. We thank you, God that you have brought us to this time. We pray for those on Facebook or those that are listening that they too will just be and know that you are there wherever they are as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning, church. I invite you to please stand with us as we enter into worship this morning and singing. Um, Yeah, I guess we'll get you moving and grooving this morning (laughs) in this very warm sanctuary. You ready? I think so. (laughs) Two, three, four. No, I'm not, clearly. (laughs) I was very... Breathing but not alive. 
have a, have full on doubts or doubts in, in little boxes in our life God that we can't justify our way out of knowing deep within our hearts that you are the way the truth and the life God and that today maybe today we can let down a little bit more of our guard God and let you in a little bit more God just a little bit of your grace and love within our life God can make such a huge, huge difference, God. We pray, God, that we can have a courageous faith, that we can become more dependent upon you, God. And that that's okay in this world of pushing, that you must be independent. That we can understand that you flipped the script on so many things, God, <laughs> and that dependence upon you is right because you are the way, the truth, and the life, God. In your precious name we pray, amen. amen. God gives us so much, <laughs> right? And God asks for such little back. It is a nice challenge to try to outgive God, if you haven't tried that before. I encourage it. It's kind of a fun little race where you're never going to catch that carrot, like in front of you, like you, you watch those races. But it's fun to chase after that. It's fun to try to see how much you can give to God, and that's what tithing's about be it money, be it time, be it more grace, be it more hope bestowed on people, whatever it is that God's asking you, there's so many different ways we can tithe. Uh, but I do want to talk about ministries that need funding. This is the third Sunday of the month, so um, we highlight our community outreach ministries. We have two of those, just as a reminder, because it's been a while since we've talked about our outreach ministries. We have our homeless backpack ministry, um, where if, when you're here, there's in the fellowship hall, you'll see backpacks hanging up on hooks. Those are filled with like food, some hygiene items, clothes, um, some practical items of living that are free to take by anybody. Keep them in your car when you pass by somebody that seems that they could use and God calls you, give them that backpack. They've got something to carry stuff. They've got some practical things within that. And they see that somebody cares. Most importantly, they could see that somebody cares, and maybe, just maybe, in a glimpse of looking at your face, they could see the face of God and that love by giving that backpack. The second ministry we have is um, food distribution. That's the fourth Sunday of the month and where we supply groceries to, to folks within our neighborhood where God, again, like the homeless ministry, works beyond these walls because that's where God 
works, right? <laughs> Everywhere. Omnip omnipresent all over the place. So those are two ministries that when you give to the outreach ministries, that's where those funds go. They go to fill those backpacks and they go to fill the grocery bags. So that's where you're giving when you give to that ministry. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the impact that us just as mere individuals, a little grain of sand on the beach, God, can have in your community and your, your kingdom, God. And we just thank you that we have an opportunity to give, God, in whatever capacity we can, in whatever way in which you call us, God. Because we all have our, we all have our, our ministries, God. Help us to know what they are, God. Give us guidance, God, on what we can do to serve in your kingdom in your precious name and we ask for a blessing that you multiply any funds any time and any other type of tithing that people do god that you multiply that god in your precious name we pray amen
want to read a passage from Matthew as we prepare our hearts for prayer this morning. I was reminded of it in my quiet time, and it's Matthew chapter 20, starting at verse 29. As Jesus and the disciples left the town of Jericho, a large crowd followed behind them. Two blind men were sitting beside the road, and when they heard that Jesus was coming that way, they began shouting, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on us. Be quiet, the crowd yelled. But they shouted louder. Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. When Jesus heard them, he stopped and called and said, what would you like me to do for you? It was obvious that they were blind. But Jesus asked them the question, what do you need from me today? What would you like me to do? Jesus asked the question, and he's asking the same question to us. Jesus wants to hear from us what we would like him to do for us, what our needs are. When we ask the question, it's humbling. And it also makes us get more specific about our needs. The asking forces us to define exactly what we need. Verbalizing our needs out to God. Spell it out to God in specific details of the miracle we need. That brings it into the light. God's word says to come boldly before the throne. If there's something that you've asked God for in the past and you've not heard an answer, keep coming boldly, specifically asking God to meet your need. And ask it in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus. Don't stop asking. And when we're living in the in-between, in between the answered prayers, we can lose hope. It's a difficult time. And I just want to encourage us today. We all come with different needs. And I just want us to go to God. You know, it's not the person that's praying. It's not the words that we use that gets prayers answered. It's, it's us coming in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus. The words and the phrasing don't matter to God. You're his children. You're his child. And he wants to hear your heart. So I just want to give us some time in silence for all of us to just keep coming, keep asking, keep knocking, and, and keep waiting. But in the waiting... Continue to praise him and continue to worship him for who he is. So let's just give a few moments for all of us to just bring our own needs and our petitions and the cries of our heart before God. God, we cast all of our cares upon you. We lay all of our burdens down at your feet. And any time we don't know what to do, God, we will continue, continue to cast our cares upon you. You are a faithful God, and you hear the cries of our heart. So we just cover, by the blood of Jesus, all these needs, God, represented in our congregation today. 
for all of those living or walking through maybe a crisis of faith, for all of those needing deliverance, God, from addiction, from all of those needing rescue from physical pain, from mental anguish, for all of those who are tired and are weary, maybe of caring for a loved one. Whatever it is, God, maybe we need financial, maybe we need a financial miracle. But we know that, God, you are our provider. And we know that you make a way where there seems to be no way in every situation in our lives. But, God, you make your way. So help our will align with your will. God, we just give you the church and the, and the financial needs that we, we need for the ministries that we serve. We lift up our leadership team and this worship team, God. We thank you for seeing this church through so many, so many trials and to victory. We lift up Pastor Joyce as she comes this morning, God, to bring us your message. Open our hearts to hear our our. our, our, our Help us to receive this new, fresh word. And God, may we walk out of here today with a new and deep and personal, individual relationship with you. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. If I didn't know it, I would think God's already speaking. Oh, God is for everyone this morning. Last week we talked about change, remember? And did anybody change? Oh, wow, okay. Effective preaching, Pastor. Way to go. <laughs> we talked about the fact that it takes courage to change, right? All right, so you're courageous enough to come back and hear the second part of our our message this morning. Thank you for being so brave, brave to to come through the cold uh, 40 degree weather here in Florida, right? And, And coming into a time and a place where you get to hear God's word. Because maybe, just maybe, some of you need a breakthrough, right? Some of us need a breakthrough. Meaning we're, I don't know about you, but if you keep doing what you're doing, you keep getting what you got, right? So we know that's why we need change. We, want, we don't want to stay stuck and stagnant and in the same place all the time, spiritually especially, but emotionally and otherwise, correct? We sometimes need a major change to happen to drastically, miraculously change us and then in turn change our life and the life of people around us, right? Because God is the God of change. God never changes his love for us, but God wants us to transform and grow and continue to move forward into, into Christ-likeness more and more. So God is a God of movement all the time, helping us grow into a greater abundance of what life is designed to be. So we're going to go to Mark chapter 2 to begin this part of this message. Mark chapter 2. Jesus in chapter 1 has been preaching and teaching all throughout Galilee, and, he's, and he speaks about how he's how he has to get the gospel message to everyone. And in all the processes by which he is preaching and teaching, he's also healing and restoring people's lives. He's showing them miracle after miracle after miracle. And by those miracles, they suddenly realize, wow, we're in God's presence. And a lot of changes took place. So you can see that through Jesus, God sent him to change our lives for the better to stop us from being stuck in the same place over and over, which becomes a rut, which is obviously, basically a rut is a grave without ends to it, right? You get stuck in a place. But God is the God of change and growth and healing and restoration and breakthrough. 
So we get to Mark chapter 2. He's been around in Galilee. And then it says here, when Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. And as soon as they heard that he was back home, the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room, even outside the door. This is the word about Jesus' miracles and changing people's lives, all the healings and transformations, and only God could have done these things kind of things happened. And the word had spread, and so was, they knew where he was staying. So guess what? All of those people went to that house seeking Jesus, seeking healing, seeking a breakthrough, right? And so it was so packed with people. I pray for the day that this church is so packed with, with people that it's, it's, it's outside the door and out in the parking lot and everywhere else is just jam-packed with people seeking Jesus, seeking miracles, seeking change, seeking something that they never had before and seeking something different for their lives because maybe we get sick and tired of being sick and tired and we want things to change, don't we? And sometimes, you know, God gives us that internal motivation to want to change. And so these people had something that also takes place when change is about to happen. They had the desire to change. When your want to is greater than your wish to, you're going to change. You're going to desire change so much. When you've had enough of not enough or whatever the enough, enough is, you're going to say, I need to get to God. And so these people had a desire so much so, all of them that came there needed something from Jesus. So it's okay to understand and believe and know that all of us need something all the time, don't we? We're needy people. <laughs> but what we need most is Jesus, right? That's the answer to every problem all of us have, getting our way to Jesus, having that desire to get there. So it was packed. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him into Jesus because of the crowd. So they turned around and went home. They gave up. Oh, well, it's too packed in here. Forget about it. We don't even know how long it took them to convince this paralyzed man to leave home, let them carry him into this place, right? So who knows what kind of conversation that had or was. I'm sure it was somebody who had heard about Jesus and said, you got to meet this man, you got to meet this man, right? One of those evangelist type of personalities that are trying to push, kick, pull, kick, drag people into a place where Jesus is, right? And so they carry him on this mat and they get to the door and they can't get in. You ever gone so far in your life to something, something you're trying to change or you're wanting to grow, you're wanting to get closer to God or wanting somebody else to get closer to God and you're almost there, right? You got them convinced to come to church on the Sunday morning, right? And it's a quarter of 10 and they call you and say, oh, I can't go. And you go, no, you're coming today. <laughs> right? <laughs> you get, and they say, no, sorry. So close. So many of us get so close to victory. So close, <clears throat> something gets in the way, right? That's Satan at work, a block, a blockade, an obstacle. <sighs> they couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So guess what they used? Something else that is necessary in change. Creativity. They got creative. They got innovative. Hmm, how can we get this man in there? Hmm, let's see, he's pretty long, and there's four of us, and we can't get him through the door this way. Hmm, I wonder how we're going to do that. What do you think? The crowd didn't part to say, oh, please come in ahead of us. Hmm, those people outside the, that door that were blocking the way, they needed Jesus more than maybe this man, right? got in the way. Things get in the way of our success sometimes, don't they? Things get in the way of, of, of us helping others sometimes, right? Because we're needy and we need to see them, right? And that's okay because you have the desire to change. So they were creative though and here's what they did. They dug a hole through the roof. What? 
Yep. They dug a hole through the roof above Jesus' head, right above it. Then lowered the man on his mat. This had to be a big hole, right? Now keep in mind that the roofs were made of thatch and, and, and mud and stuff, so he could dig through it. They dug through it, right? We don't know how long it took. Jesus was healing a bunch of people during this time, obviously. But they made sure that this man got to Jesus because they calculated somehow, some way, I can hear his voice, I can hear him healing, I hear him, I'm going to get as close to him as we can get this man. So they dug through that roof and they dropped this man gently and so gingerly down in front of Jesus. Wow. If you can't get in the door... You create an entrance. Grand entrance. See, I, I think we have to keep our wits about us when things aren't going right and we get so far and you're doing good and you hit that plateau. All of us have done that with exercise and diets and trying to save money and all the things we want to change and getting closer to God and sometimes all kinds of distractions come our way, right? And blocks will come and you get really, really close to changing that, that thing in you that you, you pray to God, I want to change this, or you get so close to it, right? And a block comes. But you have to keep your wits about it. You have to do whatever it takes. That's the wit. Get it? Ah. Whatever it takes. You take courage. You add desire. You throw in creativity. And then you add on determination, a no matter what mentality. I am going to get to Jesus no matter what. Because I want that change. I want to be different. I want more. I want to be healed. I want a breakthrough. And I don't know about you, but if you get tired of hitting your head against the wall, get a group of people to dig a, get a sledgehammer and knock the wall down with you. You notice it was four other people there that held up this man. You see why we need a support group of a minimum of four people to carry us sometimes. That's what churches are. We're the carry people. We're the, we're going to figure this out with you people. We're going to find a way for you with you people. We're going to be there and carry you through. And we're going to have the kind of determination that until we get to the breakthrough, we are not going to stop trying or doing or going or knocking walls down right determination and persistence are greater than intellect and knowledge and wisdom and all those beautiful things all of us have because a determined person that wants to save a soul can save a soul those four men did seeing their faith jesus said to the paralyzed man my my child your sins are forgiven what he got a double blessing. And then the Pharisees, of course, are there too. They're infiltrated in the, in the crowd. They were probably the ones blocking the door of all. Those religious people trying to keep people out. But no, we can't be stopped, can we? We can go through those doors, can't we? Or we make our own entrance, a grand entrance. <sighs> Jesus said, I have the authority to forgive sins, so this man needs forgiveness. That's first and foremost for all of us. You see how important forgiveness is even above being paralyzed? Because lack of forgiveness can paralyze it, can us, can it? Shame and guilt can keep us down. Doubt and fear can keep us down, can't they? Yes. But forgiveness can set us free and cause us to rise up again. And then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. The man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked out through the, through the door, through the stunned onlookers. Can you just imagine that scene? There's a hole in the roof. It's all kinds of mud and, 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 and straws all over people's heads at this point, even on top of Jesus, right? And the people see this miraculous thing take place. 
forgiveness of sins, first and foremost, and secondarily, this man who, who could not walk, who could not move, who had been stuck in place for a number of years, gets up from the place where he was, and he walks out the door, and everybody stands back in awe. Wow. Don't you love it when someone has a breakthrough? Don't you love it when someone who's beaten down, beaten down, beaten down, and they come back up and there's, suddenly they're up again moving? And that you see the victory in them? They didn't give up. They didn't quit. And people kept praying, right? You see miracles that way. But getting to Jesus is the key, is it not? Yes. Breakthrough happens through relentless unwavering determination to get to Jesus. Whether it's getting to Jesus here physically in our church, this is a place where Jesus lives and dwells and moves amongst us through the power of the Holy Spirit. But you can get to Jesus in your prayer time, in your alone time, and if you can't get to Jesus, get four other people to get you there with you. All right, turn to Acts chapter 2, 12. This is when the early disciples started their ministry. The Holy Spirit had come upon them, and they're, and they're working things out quite well. And the Pharisees are trying to stop them. So if you're trying to move forward to change, if you're trying to do something different with your life, especially spiritually, know that there are going to be factions and forces to try to stop you. Life will happen to you. And if you're not careful, if you only focus on what life that's happening to you is, you cannot move forward, can you? You'll get stuck in those emotions about what's happening and the circumstances around you because we are human beings. But what transpires is all these miracles take place through Peter and through all the other apostles, and the Pharisees don't like it. So what they do is they arrest Peter and they throw him in jail. They're going to end his ministry. If you're working towards something greater in your life, don't, don't, how do I say this? Be sure you understand that there are forces of evil trying to stop you from doing what God is going to call you and ask you to do as well, right? So sometimes you get entrapped in certain circumstances in your life, and they seem to go on forever, correct? All right. What do you need? A breakthrough, Right? So, in 12 verse 5, it says this. While Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. So we see in this particular case, when somebody that is in need, like Peter, he's been chained inside of this, if this prison. The church prays earnestly for him. It isn't like, Okay, you see, oh, hey, everybody, Peter's in prison, and one person goes, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, and not even praying. You know, that's like the Facebook method of praying. They earnestly, they put that in, in that's the only thing they're thinking about. When we know of people in our church or outside of our church that are in dire need, we pray earnestly for them. We pray until the breakthrough happens. We keep praying. We keep going to God. We keep asking God to help them. The night before Peter was to be placed on trial, he's going to go on trial now so he could be permanently put in jail. He was asleep, fastened with two changed between two soldiers. They made sure they had him good and locked in. Have you ever had a situation in your life where you felt locked into something? chained to it, you can't break free of it, you're stuck in it, nothing's changing, nothing's changing, nothing's changing. We've all been there, haven't we? <laughs> Locked between two soldiers trying to make sure he can't escape. The enemy tries to make sure he ties us up and binds us up with situations in our life that try to keep us from where we could be. And there we are stuck, locked chained our own guilt our own shame some of us are chained to the past 
It's, a, it's the hugest boulder you could ever carry behind you if you can walk at all. Others stood guard at the prison gate. So there's a crowd at the prison gate, too, making sure Peter can't escape. So sometimes life circumstance, have you ever, anybody, anybody ever felt overwhelmed? That's the prison guards around you trying to keep you back and hold you down and keep you from your glory and from your victory and from who God is really wanting you to become and be and lead you to the better place. Satan uses circumstances and, and sometimes other people and even our own minds to imprison us. When you keep thinking about that past of how awful you were this morning. Oh, yesterday or 10 years, right? That's why we need forgiveness, right? But there are sometimes unseen forces that are keeping us and holding us bound. This is a literal situation. But see, the things in literal also are symbolic and also spiritual, are they not? We can be bound up by all kinds of things. I have been there. I know what that's like. It's called addiction. Addiction to approval. Addiction to pleasing people. Addiction to alcohol, drugs, and, and people, and things, and money, and all kinds of things. Wait, we can get locked in those places, can't we? And we want to do what? Break out. Break free. Suddenly. Ooh, there it is, church. There was, a, oh, what's happening before this? People are praying. Please let us know, and you can do it anonymously. If you've got something you're really struggling with and it's your, broken, your heart's broken about or you're stuck somewhere emotionally or physically or otherwise, let us know so we can pray for you. Just say, I'm in prison right now. Not literally. But even if you were, we'd visit. But needless to say. <laughs> so we can pray, right? Because after prayer comes what? Suddenly. Suddenly, God acts. There was a bright light in the cell. Oh, the light has come. A bright light. And an angel of the Lord stood before Peter. Woo! How'd you like one of those angel before the Lord, Lord standing before you? Uh, um, oh, yeah, wouldn't that be great? You're going to have it today, I promise you. <sighs> the Lord struck him on the side to wake him. <laughs> wake him. I guess Peter was a heavy sleeper. <laughs> Quick, get up. So listen, God doesn't mess around when he wants. When, you, when you're praying and others are praying for you for a breakthrough, we want you to quit, get up, and get out of the situation. Get up and get out. Quick. You got to do it fast because if you think about it, you probably won't, will you? No thinking allowed when it comes to change. Do not think about it. If you want to change for the better, if God is calling you to something greater, just do it. Quick, get up. And the chains fell off his wrist. And the angel of the Lord didn't even undo them. Didn't have a key. And the angel told him, get dressed and put on your sandals, buddy. We're going places. You've been set free. Put on your coat and follow me. The angel ordered. Sometimes I've been known as the, tell it like it is, pastor. The direct pastor. The push you off the ledge, pastor, out and watch you go and fly, pastor. I'm just following what the scriptures have taught. The angel ordered those people to have a breakthrough, to have a change, to have a better life, to go for that dream, to go for that ministry, to go be a person that you've always wanted to be and do what you've always wanted to do in terms of following Christ. And to have a breakthrough from what you've always been doing to doing something different and better and more godly. <laughs> Peter left the cell following the angel, but all the time he thought it was a vision. He thought he was having a dream. He didn't even realize it was actually happening. And Peter finally came to his senses. He said, it's really true. <laughs> 
Have you ever gotten to a place where you overcame something? Anybody, I hope, say you have? And do you ever really say to yourself, I'm really changed? Isn't that a great feeling? Isn't it like, I don't do that anymore? I used to drive down the road and scream at people while they were driving. I don't do that anymore. I guess the rest of you, that's not a true statement. <laughs> For some reason, that is the manifestation of true change in all of us, is it not? <laughs> oh, he said, the Lord has sent his angel and saved me from what the Jewish leaders or the evil ones had planned to do to me. God is a God of rescue, Right? We see two stories here, and I put them together because to me they're both about breakthrough, aren't they? In one situation, it took people that wanted to help this person change and be healed. And so they did whatever it took to get that man to Jesus. And Jesus did his thing, right? Jesus always does his thing. He always changes people's lives. He always helps people heal. He always helps people break through those situations or through those addictions or through those problems or through those personality defects that they have. We all can have breakthroughs like that, can't we? Jesus does his thing. But in this particular case, we see somebody stuck where nobody could rescue him, couldn't get him out. But you see how God acts and operates while the people were praying over here for Peter to be released, God steps in. God is the God of breakthrough. He broke into the cell, just like those four men dug in the hole and got, to, got that man to Jesus. It's all about breaking in so we can break out. Oh, it's pretty cool to me. Right? Kind of cool. So look at it this way. If you can't get to the people to help you, get to Jesus. Jesus is going to come to you. Listen to that. If you can't get a hold of the four pastors that are here <laughs> to carry you to Jesus or talk to you about Jesus or whatever the case might be, Jesus is still going to come to you when you tell them about your circumstance. And in the meantime, we'll be praying for you if you tell us what your circumstance is. Because sometimes you need us to help you break down some barriers. And man, oh man, I'm, I'm great with a sledgehammer. Right, Pastor Lisa? She's got the injuries to prove it. <laughs> See, God's all about breaking down walls, breaking away chains and building bridges, helping us get to God and a better life. Prayer breaks chains. God sets you free. And miracles happen in, the, in that whole process. Because there's power, there's power, there's power in the name of Jesus. When we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus. Because in the name of Jesus, chains are broken, lives are changed, people are set free, people are, are just grow and they, they find what they need most, which is a spiritual love that never will go away. And they have a means by which to solve their problems. Because, well, you don't need to solve your problems. You need to go to a problem-solving God. That's what prayer is for. And so each and every one of us, whether it's an illness, whether it's a sickness, whether it's some kind of trauma that you've been through, whether it's some kind of stuff in your past, you're here today to break free and break through from all of that. All of you. God wants you to have a full, abundant life and to live life to the very fullest. But you can't do it if you're chained to your past, if you're chained to your pain, if you're chained to the things about yourself that you think, or if you think you can't, or won't, or God doesn't want you to, or you're so afraid. When your fear is... <laughs> hmm. When your desire for change is greater than your dread of fear, you will change. But there's only one way for all of us, the creator of the universe... For all of us to change is to say, I need that change. 
I need it. I'm in prison. I feel guilty. I feel ashamed. I made a mistake. I made lots of mistakes. And I want your forgiveness, God. And I want a relationship with you, not just for the miracle of change, but when you change my heart and you change your heart, that changes life too, does it not? We have to do whatever it takes to change to something better. Anybody here need a breakthrough? Even people on Facebook are waving their little hands at me. As the song comes on this morning, I want you to really live the song because it goes, ties quite well with this message. It was put to, brought into my mind while I was preparing this. And I had the names of it all screwed up, messed up, and thank God Pastor <laughs> Jamie knew the name of the song. But needless to say, I knew the words. <laughs> there's power in prayer. But there's greater power in the prayer when you pray your prayer in the name of Jesus. Because that's what he said. Ask anything in my name and I will do it for you. You got to start asking, church. You got to start digging, church. You got to start carrying people in here, church, so people can change and grow and have the life that they so deserve and desire and God wants them to have. But we're going to begin with you all because you're in the room. <laughs> you're in the room. So as the song plays... If you want to close your eyes, you may. I'll end the sermon here, I think. But I do want you all, and those that are watching on Facebook, you can do this too. Just, just tell God what you need. If you need a breakthrough and you're ready for that breakthrough, and you desire that breakthrough, all it takes is going to Jesus, calling on the name of Jesus, asking Jesus to help you with whatever it is. We don't need to know what it is because God does. And if you need a breakthrough or you need to break free, God will step in suddenly and set you free. In Jesus' name.
chain, to break every 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 chain. Oh, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for the message this morning. What an encouragement. What an amazing God we serve. That we can come before your throne boldly. That we can lay all of our troubles at your feet. And know that we're standing on a rock and not shifting sands. To know that we are 100% assured that you hear us. Every word. You see every tear. You feel every feeling. We thank you, Lord God, for your love for us, unconditional, unwavering, amazing love, amazing grace that you have for our lives and our poor decisions. And we thank you, Lord God, that as we take our steps in whatever direction that we feel like we're supposed to go, that you guide us and direct us and keep us on the straight and narrow. And we thank you, Lord God, for your love for us. We just pray, Father, that as we leave this place, that we don't leave the Holy Spirit in this building, that we take that Holy Spirit, we take your Holy Spirit with us, Lord God, that no matter where we go, that we can be that light, not only just for the fellowship with you, Lord, but for the encouragement of others. We thank you, Lord God, and praise you, and thank you again for this new year and the new bright hope for healing, for direction, for new depths of relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Have a blessed week, everybody.